So it's been several days, not so, I, well how much is several? I always kind of equate it with seven, but there's been more than a few days where there has been no activity in um, the game because I don't know why. Um, but in those days, I've, I've gotten a lot of work done on the mountain, so I just kind of want to show you. It feels like it's going to be my turn again soon because things have started to uh, get going. It's not currently, but um, I thought in preparation for that, I'd show you how our mountain has been. Uh, funny, uh, I, I had had a mental conversation with Runt, and she was disapproving of the mound. I kind of look at the mound building as um, our sort of ritual expression our expression of ritual. Um, and the, what's funny about that is, you know, that we've still been doing it, I think, out of habit. Uh, even though Little Red, who kind of was our priestess who showed us the mound building, has, uh, his cultural forces have moved on, or I think gone underground. Um, I'm gonna show, yeah, this is a perfect example. So, <laughs> uh, my son here has been, keeps wanting to destroy the mound, but I keep wanting to build it up. Um, and so the, the funny thing about that is he's sort of, Runt is sort of the new generation of priestess. Um, and he's the new generation of, of really. And so, and I, I keep wanting to build the mound and keep want, it, wanting to make it big. Um, and he keeps wanting to destroy it. So, I don't know, something interesting about that, how, how that kind of reflects the, the, the game. The other thing I've been doing while waiting for B to be my turn again is re I took it well not a, I have I did this once on one occasion so I guess it's not something I've been doing it's something I've done. Um, I started reading this book uh, Championship Fathering which is those of you who've been following this this series of my perspective on this forum game that uh, I've been engaged in. Um, I went on this sort of uh, quest to a barbecue and along the way I had some um, mild adventures and one of those involved finding this book. Championship Fathering is the book I got at Visiting Nurses in Centralia. It turns out it's a focus on the family book which kind of um, you know makes sense given given the uh, cultural climate of the, the county but a focus on the family for those of you who don't know is or at least I, I know very little about it but um, it is a it's a cultural entity very uh, right-wing um, Christian entity um, but one of the things they do is they focus on the family. I think, I suspect they do better when they focus on the family and they don't focus on other areas and claim that those areas have things to do with the family. Um, so this is a book about fathering and, you know, in the spirit of kind of trying to find information that's maybe, find information that I find is worthwhile from this, this culture that I don't really feel associated or I, like I really totally understand or um, feel a part of or uh, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm looking at this to find some information. So, so far what I found out is that uh, championship fathering involves, it breaks fathering down into three, three sorts of activities. One is loving, the other is modeling, and the final is coaching. So I'm going to try and use those to um, sort of guide my real people for um, this game, I'm going to try to love them, model for them, and um, coach them to success. So this this might be a, a kind of a Bible that we use and we go back to again and again as we go through the game. Whenever there's a maybe maybe I'll do it like I did with um, I do with ghost stories and the Tao Te Ching. Whenever I'm kind of stuck on what to do and how to how to how to work with these people, I might flip to a page and see what to find out and I, I might come back and give you um, more information about championship fathering as I read through the book. Right now we're on chapter two. Championship fathering, what is it? All right, it is about a day later since the previous footage you just witnessed and in that time the ice age ended. So now it's a tropical age which is very nice for people who like warmer weather but not so nice for several of my uh, game playing partners. Um, new Ukradine, which is over here in the Mouflon Sheep uh, Hex, that was um, Wolf Corbett's city, that went into the water, as did um, the unnamed town over here, 
but in the water buffalo hex. Those both went into the water as well as I believe um, one of Jonathan's uh, one of Jonathan's units, and I think that was that was the extent of the casualties. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the game, which you really should you should get familiar if you're going to try to follow this, because I it might be confusing. Um, spaces like this are land in an ice age and water otherwise. Sp uh, likewise, um, spaces that I have this blue circle, those are water in a tropical age and land in an ice age. So if you build a city in a place like that, it's going to go underwater when the water, when the ice melts. Um, so that's that's changed things quite a bit. I, we're no longer in as much of a threat, and we're also thankful that we moved from this space right here. Otherwise, we our people would be enslaved by someone, um, and I think we would get to choose in that case because we would be uh, dead by natural forces. This game has a a thing where you never really lose. You you don't get eliminated if you've lost all your units. Um, you just become enslaved, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so now it's time for us to decide what we are going to do. It's our turn again. Um, we're definitely going to try to... Well, do we want to try and get our manager draft destiny? We have this nice double fecundity de decrease here, which is useful um, because it would keep us from chaos. But we also are on this giraffe space. Now this giraffe space, you notice, is yellow rather than... Let's see if I can find another example. This one, which... This black rhino, which doesn't have a circle, um, the danger of that is if the the savanna climate, which you see is the most likely, has a one, two, and a three on there on a D6. It's got a 50% chance whenever the climate changes um, to change into desert. So it's dangerous, but giraffe really likes it. Fortunately, I don't know where I put my giraffe card. It's been about a week or so since I played, and I misplaced her somewhere. I don't know where giraffe is, so. Maybe Runt's gonna be making the decisions. I gotta think about that. Yeah, I think I I think I am gonna rule that since Giraffe is missing, um, maybe she's in the bathroom or something. Maybe she's going number two. Uh, Runt gets to make the call, and Runt is not gonna go for the Mana Giraffe Destiny this turn. Instead, she's gonna ransack these doubled granaries. Normally, we wouldn't be able to do this because it's an Era 2 card. Um, however, because our ritual has religion there, it has this eyeball, that lets us ransack things from um, further, further, um, further eras. So we'll go ahead and play that card, get the double fecundity decrease. Um, and then we got to make a population action. I think she is going to want to do that. I have to decide where she wants to spread. Because of the, um, the loss of the, because of the tropical age, a lot of you, a lot of spaces are are open. Um, we were kind of cramped, but we're not so much now. We got to decide where we want to expand. I almost neglected to draw a new card. Um, and while the the giraffe culture is is somewhat uh, sleeping, I don't know what giraffe is doing. This is this hasn't happened to me before. Um, Runt is taking over and spawning, so she is going to spawn this fellow here. This is flush. Flush is a teacher. His secret fantasy is to sing in the Metropolitan Opera. He loves middle school children. That's an, an unusual fact about Flush. I think that is kind of unusual, actually. If you know teenagers, they can be a mite bit difficult. <laughs> uh, his pet peeve is paranoid women. Um, I think he probably has some very specific experiences there. He'd like to meet Billy Graham. Um, so he definitely has some specific experiences. Billy Graham, I wonder, I think he's connected to focus on the family. Um, so I think, I think we could have some conversations about our fatherhood book, our championship fathering book. His personal motto is hard work never hurt anyone. But why chance it? <laughs> that's more of a, that's a little joke. Um, he's most proud of his dizzying intellect. His reputation in high school is opinionated swine. I'm getting that. Uh, three words that describe him are sensitive, giving, and well-bred. All right, so this is Flush. And Flush, so I guess Flush is going to decide where he moves. Um, and I'll get back to you. I can tell you right now, these two do not get along. They have a lot of similarities. They're both um, outspoken, I would say, and opinionated. They both they both w like to perform. They both want. They both desire to be 
um, famous performers in different different senses. Um, he, he an opera singer, and she a um, in in Broadway. So they are really having a hard time deciding where exactly Flush will be. He's currently right there. Um, I haven't given him a figure yet. Um, he wants to go to Europe. She wants to go to Africa. He kind of has a little bit more sway in this since he's actually the population unit. But she's trying to dissuade him. Um, I don't think that's going to work. And against... Oh, can he even get there? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. And yeah, that's the that's where he can get. So he's going to go right up here. Um, yeah, I don't... Uh, I guess there's a lot of opera there.